most dairy farms in the country have their own unique practices that they implement in their farms to maximize on production. Today, dairy farms is in Meru County to meet one Mr. Mutwiri Ringera, who retired from his well-paying job about nine years ago to follow his passion in dairy farming. Mr. Mutwiri has faced a lot of challenges. Stay tuned as we take you through his journey. In any agricultural venture, patience is a virtue as we have come to learn from the many farms we have visited. For Mr. Mutweri, dairy farming is not a walk in the park, although this has been his passion since his heydays as a police officer. The Corine farm has grown through leaps and bounds and is among the highest in milk production and the most sought after in heifers for sale in the region. After school, after my A-levels, I didn't make it to the university, so I joined the Bikenya Police Force uh, in 1992. And uh, all through during my tour of duty, because I was uh, passionate about uh, dairy farming, I used to visit many dairy farmers. And uh, eventually, I made up my mind that I would take uh, early retirement in order that uh, I can go to pursue my passion, which was the uh, dairy farming. And therefore, in uh, 2011, I retired from the police force. I obtained the rank of a chief inspector and uh, now came to strictly do dairy farming uh, here. And that is when I established the uh, Gakurine Dairy Farm. I'm gonna <laughs> Uh, my beginning was uh, even when I was working as a police officer, I used to own one uh, or two, three cows. And uh, whenever I identified a good uh, cow, I could buy and bring it home, knowing that eventually I would back on dairy farming. So by the time I was uh, coming to retirement, I had already about uh, six uh, good cows. And having retired with the benefits that I got, I went to Gidongori, I added more six cows, and then my uh, dairy farm took off from there. Kenya's dairy production sector is characterized by a huge number of small-scale farmers who make up to 70 to 80 percent of the total production. The cooperative system has contributed significantly to the development of the dairy sector in the country with the emergence of the Kenya Cooperative Creameries. Many other private cooperatives have since come up. For many small-scale dairy farmers like Mr. Ringera, forming or joining such cooperatives comes as a relief if they are to return a profit in this farming venture. In fact, uh, most people they think that uh, doing dairy farming is like a walk in the park, but uh, there are challenges. And uh, mainly when I was alone, I realized that there are several uh, challenges that I could not be able to tackle <coughs> uh, because there are issues of, uh, when we were starting, there were issues of uh, good genetics. Uh, there, was, uh, there were issues on uh, feeds, and in feeds we talk about uh, uh, fodder and concentrates. Uh, then there, was, there were issues about uh, management, we required uh, capacity building, and uh, of course marketing, uh, marketing of our milk. So with those challenges, we realized that uh, we need to come together, uh, uh, several farmers, in order to share ideas and know how to approach uh, different situations. Uh, so in 2014, we formed a group uh, called Mesrops Dairy Farming Group. Uh, initially, we were 15 members, but now we have increased the number up to 30. And uh, with that group now, uh, we sat down and uh, really uh, tried to address these challenges one by one. So first, uh, it was on genetics, how we could improve our cows for, to get genetics that are going to give us maximum production. Uh, we called uh, uh, various companies that deal with the uh, AI services. They came and trained us. Uh, they taught, at, uh, taught us about the best uh, 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 semen to use. 
we bought a can for our group and then we started the sourcing for good uh, semen from these companies and that is how we came to improve uh, our prints. Uh, mainly we are milking about uh, 10, most of them are AFAS and uh, from the 10 that uh, we are milking we are getting an average of uh, an average of uh, 180, 170, 180 liters and uh, the others that are in calf. Uh, when we are in uh, uh, maximum production, we make even up to 300 uh, liters per day. Yeah, but right now, uh, we are making about uh, 170, 180. Feeds, be it fodder or concentrates, has and is always a major challenge with most, if not all, dairy farmers. Proper planning and where to source fodder for your high producing breeds should be given priority before embarking in this demanding venture. Silage making for small scale farmers is among the ways to guarantee that your livestock will have sufficient quality feeds throughout the year. Even though many farmers have a rough idea on how to make silage, one of the problems facing dairy farming in Kenya is the selection of appropriate silos to make quality silage. More often than not, the silo you use will control the quality of the silage as well as the duration you can store it. Having formed Meslop's Dairy Farmers Group, Mutweri says that due to lack of the quality and affordable concentrate for their cows, they had to start producing their own. Then there was the charge of uh, fins. Uh, in fact, we were lucky uh, as Mesrop's group to uh, have gotten an SNV. It's a Dutch non government organization that came in to assist us in capacity building. So they came to teach us how, on how to feed uh, these high producers. And uh, uh, we were taught how to plant uh, bomarons, yeah, other. Uh, plants with the uh, fins with the uh, root protein which is uh, required for maximum production uh, for the like Cariandra, uh, Rusan and nowadays the Buracaria that has been introduced. Then uh, there was of course the charge of uh, concentrates. Uh, you know zero in zero grazing you cannot give a cow everything that is required so you need to feed it on concentrates to supplement what it is missing or it's not getting in the fodder. So we realized that most companies selling uh, these concentrates, or dairy milk in other ones, uh, they were using substandard or they were selling to us substandard uh, fins. So we realized the best thing we can do is to establish our own uh, fins mill and that is when we came up with the project of uh, building Mesrop's dairy fins mill and that is uh, where we get our uh, dairy meal from and we ensure that uh, the quality is the best and uh, we don't have any issues even when a farmer doesn't have money you can go get things there after payment uh, of your milk then your money is deducted and taken to the to the to the to the fence meal where you consume the whatever capacity here Mr. Mutweri demonstrates on the supplements they use to make sure that their concentrates contain the required total mixed ration for maximum yields. You realize that uh, most uh, feed manufacturers, uh, they do process the uh, substandard feeds. In fact, the requirement is that uh, most of it is supposed to be 18% uh, crude protein and above. And uh, because we were feeding our cows and we were not realizing good production, we realized since it's, a, it's an issue and we decided to establish our factory. So this is a mess of uh, dairy fins meal and uh, the raw products for uh, making our dairy meal, we source them all the way from Uganda. Uh, most of it, in fact, uh, uh, the costs in Uganda, they are uh, very, uh, they, they, they are quite low compared to Kenya. And once we buy them from there, we bring them in and we use the same to do the, the, our end product. As you can see, this is a rice porridge. Uh, here we have the rime. Uh, 
Here we have uh, soya, it's very rich in crude protein and uh, matters a lot in milk production. Uh, this is uh, Magadi soda, as a mineral. Here we have uh, maize jam, uh, it's good in terms of uh, energy. Uh, this is uh, maize bran, and then here we have uh, also other raw material to provide uh, crude protein. Here we have uh, sunflower, uh, we get it in a cake form, but once we get it here, uh, we crush it with our armor meal in order to make it a flour kind of, and then we mix with other materials. Also here, we get uh, cotton in form of, uh, we call it a uh, cotton cake, and also it's crushed uh, into flour, flour form in order to mix with other ingredients. This is a uh, porant, this is a uh, wheat bran, uh, we have also molasses, and then after mixing all this with other minerals, we have got premixes, uh, we have got ESA, we have got uh, DCP, and several other uh, items to ensure that our end product, uh, which is menstrual dairy meal, the crude protein as a uh, as I think is 18% uh, required, uh, requirement and that one ensures that we get maximum production from our cows and also it's an all-round feed which ensures that uh, cows maintain their body uh, requirements after feeding it. Otherwise that is one way uh, that has ensured us, uh, that ensured that uh, we avoid the anticorruptuous uh, manufacturers who bring substandard things to us. It has assisted uh, the members in a big way because uh, even when a member doesn't have ready cash, uh, like when he's going to buy from other uh, sources, here a farmer gets uh, the requirements, then the money is going to be deducted uh, once he delivers uh, the milk. And uh, although we were establishing the factory for uh, members only, uh, we know the challenges that are, are being experienced by other farmers in the neighborhood, more so the small farmers, and also we do sell this product to them in order that they also increase their production and at the end of the day that milk uh, comes to our cooling point. So it's one way of ensuring that all our production from the farm uh, to whatever you feed uh, your animals, uh, to milk correction, there is a chain of continuity which ensures that farmers uh, operate conveniently.